What's going on everybody? Rob here, aka Trev 2323 TREV2323. Subscribe, like, and share. Today's video is going to be about my boat that I don't got yet. Okay, I sold my boat uh, probably about a year and a half ago. I had a John Boat conversion. It was a John Boat converted to a bass boat with a 25 horsepower Johnson on the back. I got some videos of maintaining it up and all that. And then I had this big bright idea that, you know what, I didn't take my John boat out uh, as often as I used to. So I didn't want it to just sit and waste away. So I sold my John boat, I sold my canoe, and I said, I'm going to get a bigger boat. I've been looking at a 25 to 27 footer. Believe it or not, I, I, have, I love the way a 1987 Carver Santa Cruz looks. I love the way those boat looks. The Carver Santa Cruz and the Carver Voyagers. And I, I put my money down on one. So this is a little bit teaching you of what I've been through. And I've spent money and I still don't got a boat. So it was a Carver Voyager 87. And it wasn't local, but it was tip-top shape, stored indoors, and everything. It had a single engine. And that's why I want, we'll look for because I want a single engine. Because I say I could spoil the crap out of a single engine. But I could just maintain two engines. My, my pockets ain't that deep. So uh, I put the money down for the boat. It's like 11 grand, 11.5. I put the money down and then I went for the loan. The boat company said, we'll give you the loan and everything, yada, 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 before the appraiser. So the loan company came back and says, we need you to put down more money because the boat, we don't feel the loan the, is the value of the boat is there. So uh, I talked to the uh, broker or whatever and I says, hey, I said, I'm not putting down that much money and pulling the money for the boat because the loan people ain't telling me the money's there for that boat. It's not worth that value. So anyways, I let that one go. I got my deposit back because the broker's the one that tried getting me it and they're the ones that said that didn't, it didn't appraise out. So meanwhile, I'm still looking for boats, looking for boats, looking for boats. And I've been looking for inboard outboards. I want a V8, V6, whatever inboard outboard. So uh, I've been the, the boat came across again and the price was dropped a significant amount, but still pretty high for this boat. And then I read the thing and apparently somebody else bought the boat or attempted to buy the boat and had it inspected and there were cracks in the engine. Although the cracks were not leaking, the engine had cracks in it. So that's why one of the reasons why you got to have the boat inspected, okay? Stumbled upon another boat, a 26.8 foot uh, Sea Ray Sundancer. And this was like an 86, I think, an 86 Sea Ray Sundancer, 26.5 feet. Everything I wanted in a boat, I, and I, so I put the money down, man. I put the money down in the winter. I put the money down on the boat. I said, this is my boat, and I paid for the inspector to come down, and he thermal imaged the boat. He looked at the whole boat with thermal imaging cameras. He had moisture meters in the boat, and he itemized everything in the boat. It was like five five $595 for inspection. Solid, good to go. The boat's good to go. I just got to wait the sea trial. Now, I'm always antsy like man i want to move on this i want to do this i want to grab this let's let why does it have to take so long the weather in chicago been a nightmare so finally comes around for the sea trial we're going to put the water then i pay somebody to take it for the sea trial but before the sea trial they put it in the water the day before and they make sure it starts and they do a mechanical check on it before the sea trial so when they put it in the water for the sea trial they went ahead and started it and it started on the first turn boom Water backflowed into the engine, dead. And I'm glad that that happened. I'm glad that that happened because it taught me to read up more on inboard outboards and inboard motors because I didn't know what would cause the engine to backflow. So stumbling upon that, I I read that uh one one well one person says that every two years you should have your risers and your exhaust manifolds checked okay there was this and the bad thing is the person selling the boat he had thirty five hundred dollars worth of stuff done to the boat the uh the, the shifters or whatever cables the throttle they aligned the engine they did so much crap to thirty five hundred dollars worth of stuff and it's it's just a, a it's a paperweight now they asked me if i still wanted to buy it they said for a thousand dollars i could still buy the boat but it there, there's too high off the ground for me to pull the engine out. I mean, I don't have the equipment you need a crane to pull the engine out, so I can't do it, nothing for me to mess with. But going back to it, that if it would have passed, if them risers or the, the manifolds would have passed on that seat trial and failed on me the next day, I'd have been out the money for the boat. I'd, I'd have completely had a, a 27 foot piece of fiberglass. So as I'm reading and researching, I started to find out that the, there's risers and there's uh, the risers are go up into the manifolds and the, the exhaust 
and the water, the impeller sucks up the water to cool the engine. So there's an impeller, sucks up the water to cool the engine. But it doesn't go in the engine, it comes out the risers into the exhaust manifold and it's like a water jacket. Like moonshiners make water jacket where they put the coil inside a water pipe and the water's on the outside and the steam's on the inside. Well, a cast iron exhaust manifold on the boat are the same thing. The exhaust manifold comes out and on the side of the exhaust manifold, the water comes down. You know, and that's what it is. But what happens is the holes for the uh, water escaping, they get plugged up. They just get plugged up with gunk or the exhaust manifold gets a hole in it. Therefore, the water goes into the exhaust manifold or it backflows into the engine, which causes water in the engine. So these risers in the exhaust manifolds need to be inspected and changed. How many used people do you know that changes their exhaust manifold? I guarantee you, you probably know a lot of people at least on your one at least on your hand that actually have a bad engine in a boat because i at least know four or five people that actually got bad engines in their boat so it just got me from thinking instead of and it's going to be a harder search for the midwest instead of getting the inboard outboard cabin cruiser which i really do have my heart set on an inboard outboard cabin cruiser i don't got the 120 140,000 to put down on one is i'm looking for an older boat with an outboard engine but with a cuddy cabin or with a porta potty cuddy cabin that's what i'm looking for right now so it's more of a needle in a haystack and you know i don't know why a lot of people slam bayliners oh bayliner i personally like the style of the bayliners but they said the holes are not as solid as a sea rare hole i don't know this for you know for sure or whatever but i've been finding some bow riders some like 17 foot bow riders the bayliners with the outboard engine on them i found the 25 foot bayliner trophy with the outboard engine on it i found the 25 foot wellcraft with the outboard engine on it so that's what i'm looking at uh, uh i'm looking at getting something with the outboard engine because if something goes wrong with the engine your boat is still intact with you could put another engine on the back but granted engines outboards are expensive now outboard motors are expensive but it's easier to have one lifted up and put out i mean i could do it with a gantry crane or with a cable lift pull the engine off of outboard but to get in a boat to get the v6 or v8 engine out the boat that's another thing that why they're so expensive to work on because if you got a v6 or v8 in your car you got a v6 or v8 in your car you could get to pieces from the top of it or you could get to pieces from the bottom of it but if you got a v6 or v8 inboard or outboard anything along the bottom of that engine you cannot access you got to raise the engine in order to work on the bottom part of it so that's another thing with the inboard outboard so i'm taking my time and i swear to god this season i was going to have a 25 to 28 footer out at the marina and i was going to go for it and all this and man and honestly i was thinking part of it is just saving my money a little bit more and putting a big chunk down at the boat show and getting something brand new but I still wanted the outboard. I do not want to deal with the inboard outboard anymore. So I just wanted to share that with you why I don't got my boat out there with this year, why I haven't been fishing on my boat. Hopefully the guy with my John boat is enjoying it. But I say, now I say like, you know, a bird in the bush is worth two, two in the, uh, no, bird in the hand is worth more than two in the bush. A boat in my yard is worth more than two that you find online and have it surveyed. When I had my 27 foot surveyed, they surveyed a 2012 and mine was like from the eighties. And with the thermal imaging, that's why a lot of the old timers told me to get an older boat because they used to hand lay the fiberglass and the fiberglass is better. So they did, they inspected my boat the same time they inspected a 2012 boat. My hull passed with flying colors completely solid and the 2012 boat failed with soft spots. So it's, this is something to look at also. Then um, if you're leaving it in the water, the anodes on this 27 foot, I was gonna have to change six anodes. They had six anodes in this particular boat that were gonna have to be changed. And the, the pieces were like 200 or 220, and then it's 125 per hour to put them in. And then they have the bottom of the boat uh, sanded and painted. If you're leaving it in the water, you should have it painted. Uh, uh, to have it sanded and painted, I think it was gonna be like another grand to have it sanded and painted. So there's is, there is a lot of cost. So I'm still on the market, I still am looking. But it's going to be a needle in a haystack because I kind of want the what a cabin cruiser has but with an outboard engine. Either way, hopefully I saved you some thought if you were going to start looking for a bigger boat, if you're going to start looking for a cabin cruiser. There's just so much that can go wrong on the older ones that, that look for, for engine immersion, water immersion. There's like six other things that can go wrong that you could get water in your engine. And, it, and for this 27 foot boat I was looking at, 26.8, it was going to be six to eight grand to put a remanufactured re engine in it. So either way, uh, 
Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, and share. And of course, I'm going to let you know as soon as I get my bigger boat. All right, bye-bye.